Hey there, this is Forsage once again with Sonic's Imperative. So you don't know Stone Legion General's mechanics yet? Well, I've got just the fix for you. Let's get you up to speed with our TLDR Stone Legion General. So here's the TLDR. If marked by Wicked Blade, run to one side of the boss and spread out, allowing everyone else to dodge the blades. If you get targeted by Crystallize, position yourself in a spot that everyone can easily access. If you have a bleed, remove it by standing inside the Crystallize. Everyone soak the yellow circles that occurs after the crystallize. It appears as a big meteor. And if there are anima orbs, bring them to Renathal at the back of the room. In phase one, tank swap on every crystallize so tanks can remove their bleeds as well. Healers, dispel slash spot heal any players afflicted by the heart rate. Phase two, tank swap on every second stone fist cast. If you're targeted by reverberating eruption, run towards the outside of the room to place your circle. Players without the debuff need to soak each zone left on the ground by the eruption. Watch your feet and dodge stone spikes during seismic upheaval. For phase three, deal with all of the abilities all over again, and make sure the bosses die at the same time. If you don't know the raid powers yet, we have another TLDR video for you right here. And if you want a more in-depth guide to Stone Legion General's mechanics, then stick around. I've got you covered. In phase one, you'll be dealing with Call, while Grishon attacks from the air. Whichever boss is on the ground is the one you'll primarily be dealing with. Call will occasionally throw out Wicked Blades, which will target a few players, fly out to them, and then boomerang back to the boss. Anyone hit by these blades is given a permanent bleed, and that includes anyone hit between them and the boss, so make sure there's a clear place for them to go. Call will also cast Heartrend, which is a dot that does a small amount of shadow damage over time, and when it expires or is dispelled, leaves a much bigger dot for six seconds. The idea here is to stagger your dispels so that the healers aren't overwhelmed with burst damage all at once. Paul will occasionally hit her current tank with Serrated Swipe, which leaves a dot on the tanks that can be dealt with by having those tanks stand in the next mechanic. Grishal has an ability called Stonebreaker's Combo, which is a three-part ability. Part one will target a player and cast Crystallize, which will cause the player to explode after five seconds and deal a small amount of AOE damage to anyone in the circle. But the more important part of this ability is that it removes bleeds. So anyone who has one of those permanent bleeds, either from the tank mechanic or from the boomerangs, can stand in this to remove it at the cost of a small amount of damage. After Crystallize explodes, part three occurs and causes a meteor to slam down at the location. This ability will deal a ton of damage to a solo player in the circle and needs to be shared by the raid. The more people, the more spread out the damage. The flying boss will also throw down spears that damages and slows players. This is just unavoidable. You will also have to deal with adds during this phase. The Stone Legion Goliath ad needs to be tanked and also needs to be focused down. At 20% health, the Goliath will transform into a statue, putting a healing debuff on all players every one second. This debuff stacks and needs to be quickly dealt with, so kill the ad. When it dies, it will drop an animal orb that can be picked up later. When Call gets to 50% HP, she'll turn to stone and take 95% reduced damage until turned back to normal. At this point, Stone Legion Commando adds will begin flying above and bombarding the area with anima. Range need to kill these adds, which upon death, drop more of those anima orbs. These orbs need to be picked up and brought to Renathal. It will restore 10% of his mana, and when he reaches 100%, will shatter the boss's form forcing them to take full damage once again. Be careful when this happens though, as it does a rather large knockback that can throw you off the platform. Now, phase two begins and the bosses swap places. Call will fly and cast Ricocheting Shuriken, which does some simple chain damage, and then she'll also cast Wicked Blade from part one. Meanwhile, Grishaw will be grounded. During this phase, Grishaw will still cast his combo that removes bleed. Rishal has also granted a few new abilities for players to deal with. First on our list is Stone Fist, which will slam his current target, dealing a bunch of damage and giving them a debuff that increases the damage that they take from this ability. This ability also causes a decent knockback, so be prepared for that. Tanks should swap around two stacks to handle the debuff. Seismic Upheaval is a simple mechanic that puts circles under players that just needs to be moved out of. So watch your feet. Reverberating Eruption will target a player with a yellow arrow and cause the boss to jump to them, smashing the ground and causing a bunch of AoE damage. This ability will also debuff the player, causing them to take more damage from this ability and echoing Annihilation for 45 seconds. 
and then will also leave behind an unstable ground zone. This ability will cause any unstable ground zones from previous casts to erupt for raid-wide damage and less soap. Players without the debuff should soak these circles, which will in turn give them a debuff of their own. You can try to overlap these circles slightly if you're a player with an immunity, but try and leave a spot for non-immunity players to soak if need be. The rest of this phase will mimic the first. You'll still be dealing with the adds in the stone form, which needs to be removed by Renathal by giving him Anima Orbs. In phase three, you'll be fighting both bosses together, which will contain all the boss's ground-based mechanics. When one of them dies, the other will gain a Soldier's Oath buff, which will cause their damage to increase by 200%. Kill them as close together as possible to avoid this occurring. Just in case you missed anything, here's that TLDR up on the screen one more time. And that's it for our TLDR Faded Stone Legion Generals. We hope that you found this guide useful, and if you want us to keep making guides like these, be sure to let us know by leaving a like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching, and go kill that boss for me.